Hi there, I'm João Frigerio and welcome to I Work in Sports interview. This is where I talk to accomplished sport business professionals who will share with you their experience, tips and advice in order to help you succeed in your career. If you work in sports or if you want to work in sports, this show is for you. This is the first episode of the series and it couldn't have started in a better way. I just got back from a trip to Sao Paulo where I had the pleasure to meet again and this time interview the president of Google Brazil, Fabio Coelho. His career is not in sports per se, but you'll see that he personally, as well as Google, where he works, is very much involved in sports. Fabio was very kind to invite me to visit him at uh, Google's headquarters in Sao Paulo. There I had the chance to talk to other Google employees and I have to say that the level of admiration that they have for him is amazing. He's a true inspirational leader. If you had the chance to talk to them, you would see that probably even better than in this interview. We sat down and had a long talk, so I decided to cut this interview in two parts. In this part, Fabio talks about how to be relevant in the work environment of the future, how anyone can be a leader, even in a large multinational corporation, what are the traits of a leader and what Google takes into account when they're hiring. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, leave your comments so I know if that type of content interests you. And of course, if you like it, uh, don't be shy, just mark the like button below. And without further ado, let's get to the interview. to see you, man. How Obrigado. You? Thank you uh, to participate. It's a pleasure to, to have you here. Uh, this is our first episode. And uh, before we talk about Google and how Google is involved in sport, I would like to talk first about your career. How did you get to be uh, where you are? You are the president of Google Brazil. You are vice president at Google Inc. Uh, please share with us uh, your experience, maybe from university until where you are, uh, briefly. Okay. So, John, first I want to wish you, good, wish you good luck in the program. I hope you, you have a series of interviews that can have people to get inspired, to learn more about business techniques and to make it work. Uh, I'm Fabio Coelho. I've been at Google for eight years. I've been president of Google for eight years in Brazil. But before that, my career actually started when uh, I was a civil engineer that moved to the consumer goods industry and then moved to the financial markets and telecom. So you can ask me, how, how can these things have happened to your career? You started working in construction, then you moved to banking, consumer goods, telecom. I would say the first thing that is important here is that I always try to go after things that were growing. And I think that's a beautiful example of sports. These are industries that have been booming uh, in the 80s, in the 90s, in the year 2000. And recently, technology for the last 15 years has, has been growing a lot. And I've been trying to learn new skills that made me adjust my profile to be a professional that was relevant to these industries. So the word that could define my career is not the companies that I worked for, is not what I've done in business, but the, is actually the pursuit of relevance. Every time that I had the chance to understand and analyze an industry or a new job, I would consider that new job with this following perspective. Am I learning new things? Is this industry a fast growth promising industry? Things that I believe are important for every professional. It's important when you're dealing with sports to understand what's happening in the process of professionalizing sports, of making it become more scientific, more data driven, making it become something which is has much more of a business appeal than the passion appeal, which is important for us that run businesses. But nevertheless, the reality is that it's, 
It's a beautiful business opportunity to work in sports, understanding the sport has become more and more globalized. It's been a, well, an impressive sort of a journey. You went from many different places to where you are now. What did you think uh, of your career when you were in, in your university? Uh, well, uh, well, I graduated in 1985. That's 30, 35 years ago, right? Reality. All, all this uh, so the technology that uh, exists today, nothing like not Google existed, existed at the time. And I, and I think that that mindset will continue to go on for the coming 20 years. When you graduate today, the jobs that will people will be working, those that graduate today, that will be working 20 years from now, are not jobs that exist today. Exactly. So what skills do we need to learn? One, the, that learning agility is important, that we need to continuously perfect our profile and go after what is new. Second, the mindset that we should always look at the emerging trends and understand that those emerging trends cannot be rejected. Some people, they look at what is new and they say, no, I don't want to deal with this because I'm, I'm consolidated in what I have learned. And that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because in reality, what is important today for a professional may not be that important five years down the road. So when I was studying engineer, I, I realized 30 years ago that I needed to incorporate new skills. And I had to learn to go after those skills, be that formally, going to a university to do a postgraduate program or several courses, or informally, reading, getting to know. So curiosity is very important. Structured curiosity, the ability to understand and to, and to inquire about new techniques, new processes, is what drove me to move from industry to industry to get to, to technology 15, 20 years ago. As you said, many of the professions that uh, exist today, whether it's uh, drone pilots or YouTuber, yeah. uh, as, uh, as your daughter now uh, wants to be a YouTuber, didn't exist today. Uh, many of the professions that will you know, exist in 10 years don't exist now. So that sort of ability, especially uh, wanting uh, to learn new skills are very important uh, to pursue a career. And how do you assess that then when you're hiring someone? So what is crucial for when you're hiring someone? What you look at? Well, at Google, when we hire someone, we look at four things. One, it's learning ability. And learning ability is not only the IQ, the ability to learn quickly and fast and to have a good way to incorporate, to absorb new concepts, but it's also the curiosity. That's, that's one, learning ability. The second one has to do with any type of experience associated to the job. If you have a, a position available, does that person possess the skills required to perform well? That's not very important, but it's also important. It can give some differentiation if someone has been exposed to a certain area of knowledge in comparison to other professionals that have not been. The third one is leadership. And leadership, it's a combination of passion, a can-do mindset, and ability to work in groups, which is so important these days because we live in a network of contacts and we need to make sure that we influence people. I don't believe in leadership coming from the top. Everyone has to be a leader today because you're influencing people all the time. And the last one thing that we look here at Google is called Googliness, and it has to do with what drives you in life to make it to make this world a better place when you talk about googliness if you are very eager into making a lot of money that's okay but perhaps google is not the best place place for you if you're driven by that mm -hmm. if you're driven by a passion of making things better or differently or serving the society or serving other people um, that mindset is a little bit, it's not nothing against money, but that mindset is a little bo bit more in line with what we want to do here. If, you are, if you're able to work in teams and if you ha you're happy collaborating and working in gray areas. So a, a googly personality mm -hmm. is very important. So that's what we look at, learning agility and learning ability. It is uh, experience in the role, 
it is leadership and it's googliness. Uh, let's talk about uh, leadership that you just mentioned there. That's uh, so you are the leader here of uh, Google uh, Brazil, the presidents. There are many other positions of uh, people in leadership positions, but there are many that are not. How does that work sort of in the framework? Not everyone can be a leader in a company. How does that work in, in Google's uh, sort of mindset? Well, John, I think that everyone has to be a leader in a company because everyone represents the company. I, mm -hmm. I happen to be the most senior chair in, in Brazil mm -hmm. and in Latin America by extension. But it doesn't mean that I'm the only leader here. Actually, I think sometimes my role is to facilitate other people so they can really become true leaders. Leaders with their communities, leaders with their customers, leaders with their business partners, and leaders internally. So I think we take turns. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one of the best traits of a leader, once I read a book about leadership and it said that a leader needs to have four things. People do not follow leaders based on their hierarchical position or their or job role or job, job title. They, they follow a person that has four things. They create hope, stability, trust, and compassion. So pretty much people want to follow uh, someone or a group of people that has a, that their project of uh, what has to be done covers these four pillars. Uh -huh. So what I try to do here at Google is to work with a team of people so we all create a sense of purpose which is driven by having everybody understand that if they make a mistake it's okay because we trust each other uh, as long as that mistake is something that is done with the best intent in mind we, we, then we create psychological safety for the team to work together to innovate to try to to, 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 to get some risk to do things that they may not get it all right but that's okay mm -hmm. and then we create a vision and that's a bold vision on transforming something that everybody shares that vision and they will profit from that vision if that thing eventually materializes. Mm -hmm. And then so that's why we say that we create hope. So it's hope, it's trust, it's, it's stability, because people pretty much understand what to expect from the group and understand what we, we can expect from what we deliver in terms of results every week, every month, every quarter, every year. And then compassion, which has to do with sometimes, you know, when you are working in this high pressure environments, we need to create time for our families, for our friends, for people not to be okay all the time, because not all the opportunities happen to everybody. So um, before we create and think about the numbers and, and, the, and the outcomes, there's people here behind. And, and when we understand that, and we put compassion in perspective, so we, we create a team of, of people that everybody can lead. Well, right. that's a very, very valuable lesson. Thanks uh, for sharing it. Uh, before we get to talk about um, Google's role in sport, I would like to talk about your involvement in sport when we were in Russia together. Um, you mentioned to me your involvement with the two giants of uh, Brazilian football, São Paulo and Flamengo. Can you share with us yeah. what's your role and also maybe if you have other type of involvements in, in sport? Well, first, uh, I'll, I'll share my personal involvement and then we can get to Google and YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, what, what our, my realization was that being a fan, uh, the passion is there. So I love Flamengo and Sao Paulo. These are two monster, the great, great soccer teams in Rio and Sao Paulo. There are many others, good teams mm -hmm. as well. But I tried to use this opportunity to uh, learn more about how we can be helpful to an industry which is so promising such as football and it's very promising because there is a moment where all these things come together the passion for the sport and then the understanding of the potential of the sport as a business and if we don't act on this to make sure that our sports in brazil they are equipped with the best techniques to really make it profitable, impactful, 
and relevant to all different segments, all different generations mm -hmm. of people, we may not be extracting the most value of it. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm working with Sao Paulo, I'm helping Haí and Kaká and, and the guys there, and Alemão and the guys there to, to, to try to, to, show, to share with them what the understanding of data can do for the presence of the brand of the club and for the presence of the athletes and trying to, to help them understand how to better monetize the assets they have is that an advisor role? That's yeah, that's an have. advisor role. They pretty much help uh, try to, to show ways that uh, over time the, the clubs, the sports clubs, and the athletes can become more relevant on the digital arena. Mm -hmm. uh, and people think it's only about social networks. It's much bigger than that, right? It's, and it's the, the notion of broadcasting and the notion of rights has evolved over time as well. Before, yeah. people would sell it to a TV network and that would be it. And people will consume content during the game and a little bit before and a little bit after. Today, uh, the, the, oh, whoever has a cell phone or access to the internet wants to consume content all the time. Mm -hmm. They want to know about the players, they want to know about the clubs, they want to get some say-so, they want to get involved in, in, in the day-to-day -day life of the, of, the, of the team and of, the, of their players. So uh, that's pretty much what I'm trying to do here, is to help a little bit uh, on, on the personal side. On the business side, of course, when you have assets like YouTube or Google, uh, the, the search engine, just to name two of the seven platforms that Google has that have more than a billion users yeah. around the world, what you end up getting is, is an opportunity to become present and to be more relevant in a subject which has very high interest and, and desire, which is sports. People are crazy for sports. And, and the, better, the more we can ex improve the quality of the experience for the users, and the more we can make the, the stars, which are the, the athletes and the teams, to know that they can best leverage these platforms, the better the sports will be as a business as well, not only as a passion for, for the fans, but also as a business for the clubs and for the players and for the managers and for everybody. And in your role with these uh, two clubs, how did that uh, start? Were you a member of uh, one of the clubs or both of them or no. just um, knowing the, the leadership? No, I just know the leadership I, 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 we, and uh, I gave them some s informal speeches about uh, and presentations about how to, to best leverage the digital assets they have, uh, how to best understand what can be done in a Google platform, what can be done in terms of future negotiation of rights, which is something that we're not doing a lot now, but one day Google will be more present in this arena. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, we're going to we'll talk about that <laughs> for sure. And, and, and then from that, we took a very simple role of helping them. So I hope you liked the first part of the interview. If you did, please uh, give this video a like down below and share it with your friends who may be interested in this type of content. Uh, the second part of the interview will be up very soon in this channel. Make sure you click on the bell sign below to get the notification. If the video has already been posted, you can already see it here on the screen. Just click on it. Go check it out as in the second part of the interview, Fabio Coelho talks about the new habits of the consumer, about the future of sports and media rights, and he shares some valuable lessons that he learned in his career. For now, Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.